flip-flops are one of the most important, or probably the most important, building blocks of modern computing. The computer you're watching this video on contains millions and billions of flip-flops. And whenever you would like to build a complex circuit, you will likely need to use some flip-flops for some data logic. For that we will take a look at this very cheap and very simple IC and we will figure out how it works. Let's get started! Today we are going to take a look at the SN74AC74 dual D type positive edge trigger flip flops with clear and preset. But if you don't have the genuine chip and your IC looks something like this, there is a good chance that it's working identical to the genuine Texas Instruments version. And here are some prices on TME. Depending on which package you choose, the price may vary, but for the dual inline package, it's uh, 60 cent a piece and uh, if you're going up in quantity it will drastically drop and if you crank it up to a hundred you can get it for 52 US dollars or maybe 50 you can get it for 29 and with 50 of these you are good for a while <laughs> and if you choose the Chinese knockoffs you get 10 cent a piece and they are usually just as good, maybe they do not last as long, but they work the same, so for experimenting they are just as good. Alright, let's get back to TI's official site and let's check the data sheet. Here we have this logic diagram, which I'm not gonna explain right now, because it's pretty straightforward from the pinout. There are two D-type flip-flops located in this IC, which can be used independently from each other. But enough talk, let's see all of this in action. So here we have the IC on a breadboard, this will be our labret, and we will build a circuit around it. First I connect up power and ground, as always. And now we can focus on the serious business. And by serious business I mean connecting up the active low clear pin to the VCC. So that means that we don't want to clear the flip-flop. And also connecting up the active low preset pin to VCC. You can read more about it in the datasheet, but as a high-level explanation, this is connected to a set and a reset pin in the internal flip-flop. The clear is set to a reset pin and the preset is set to the set pin and both of them is an active low. And here comes the real real business. We will observe the output with two LEDs with a green LED that will signify when the flip-flop is turned on and the red LED which will signify when the flip-flop is turned off. This IC has two outputs, one positive output and one negative output. Here I connect up both of the anodes with current limiting resistors. And basically this is all of the setup. We just have to power it and control the data and the clock pins. And for powering I usually add a bypass capacitor. You can go without but I... Uh, usually recommend. This is just a smaller value, 1 to 10 micros somewhere. I just picked it out from the bin, I didn't even read the value, but uh, it will decrease the chance of real results. And I connect the test wire to data and to clock and connect both of them to the negative rail. Just uh, this will be the default. And here it is. The left side flip-flop is wired in 
and we are gonna test it. Just connect the power. And we can see that the inverted output is turned on. This is always showing the opposite of the normal output. So when Q is low, not Q is high. So let's activate and turn on the flip-flop. So first I connect the data to VCC, so the data is a high pulse. And then I connect the clock line to the VCC as well. So the output will turn on and the negated output will turn off, as it is the opposite of the normal output. And let's reset by connecting the data to the negative rail and the clock, just as well. Now the negated output is turned on and the normal output is turned off. Before telling more interesting facts, please be kind and hit the subscribe button and like this video. So the YouTube algorithm will pick up my channel and recommend it to other people. And they can also discover my videos on interesting ICs, electronics and exciting projects. And let's get back to the video. So whenever you pull up the clock to high, it will read in anything that is on the data pin. So when the data is high and the clock is pulled up to high, the flip-flop will also be set to high, thus enabling the output. And when the data is low and the clock is pulled up to high, then set to low, then the flip-flop will be reset. And lastly, there is an interesting modification we can do on our circuit, which is also shown in the datasheet, where they feed the negated output into the data pin, thus controlling the flip-flop with only the clock pulse. This way you can create a toggle circuit, which you can control with the clock pulses. If you don't have this IC at hand, you can use an NE555 timer and its internal flip-flop just for the same purposes. Check out my video that I made on that. And as always, thank you for watching, don't forget to subscribe and have a very wonderful day. Francis signs out.